So I canceled my i9-9900K pre-order, and I'm probably not the only one, and also I'm not sure if you should even worry about this processor really much at all. Let's talk about this a little bit. So first let's go over some of the reasons I canceled the i9-9900K pre-order, and I was one of the earlier ones that got the processor pre-ordered at $500 flat, and after taxes that it would be like $530, $535, something like that, but I canceled my pre-order for a couple of different reasons. The biggest reason for me was the reviews that actually came out earlier, uh, by the time you're viewing this yesterday, so Friday the 19th, reviews for the 9900K lifted from their embargoes, and the one that I sought out was the Gamers Nexus review, though I did notice that Hardware Unboxed saw similar things in regards to the thermal uh, performance of the solder that Intel is using for the 9900K, and long story short, it's just um, underperforming. Now to be clear, compared to something like their old Tim, the solder that Intel is using is way, way, way better, and in fact, compared to pretty much any thermal paste, it's also gonna be better, but what Gamers Nexus found and what DeBauer found and what it looked like Hardware Unbox found was that even though they soldered the die to the IHS, the performance still just isn't enough to keep this chip cool if you're really gonna push the overclocks. And if you are getting this 500 plus dollar processor, then it's something that I would recommend. If you're looking for the top end gaming performance out of this chip, then you should absolutely overclock it. The problem is a lot of people just aren't gonna have the uh, cooler to get this thing overclocked to the uh, the speeds that I was really hoping to see out of it, which would be 5.1, 5.2 gigahertz. And looking at the Gamers Nexus review of this chip, the 9900K with the stock solder at five gigahertz was running 64.4 degrees Celsius over ambient. Now, if you're looking at ambient temperatures around 20 degrees Celsius, then we're looking at 84 85 degrees Celsius already with this chip and that's with the stock solder and frankly with solder I really expected this chip to perform a little bit better in the thermal performance area and what's interesting to me is by delitting this chip it actually looks like liquid metal is gonna perform better than the solder that's included which isn't altogether shocking but this is a weird case where actually soldering this chip now makes the processor itself a little bit less attractive to me because it makes it more difficult to actually delid the processor whereas with something like a uh, 8086K or the 8700K, those six core 12 thread unlock chips from the 8000 series, you could relatively easily delid them, especially if you had a tool like I happen to have uh, because it was gifted to me. But if you, even if you don't have a tool, they're not particularly difficult to delid. And then adding liquid metal is that much simpler. Whereas with the 9900K, because of the solder, that process is a little bit more complicated, a little bit more dangerous, and I'm not really willing to put a $500 bet that I'm just going to do a good job of it, whereas I would be willing to take that bet uh, if I'm using my D-Lid tool because that thing is about idiot-proof, and well, I kind of need that. Another reason I canceled my pre-order goes down to gaming performance and the fact that for a lot less money, I think you can get them for about $360, you can get an 8700K and overclock it to about five gigahertz using the cooler that I already have, an H100 IV2. Of course, I already have a Z370 motherboard, so it would be no problem at all for me to get an 8700K up and running at near five gigahertz, if not at or slightly above five gigahertz, and the cost would be significantly less nearly even with the $500 price point it still would have saved me almost $200 about 170 after tax and everything said and done so if I really want the gaming performance of the 9900k I would probably be better off just getting the 8700k and overclocking it as much as I could because that will get me the vast majority of the way there as far as gaming performance goes and on the other side of things for productivity, my 1800X, my Ryzen uh, first generation processor still does an excellent job in that and I actually really feel 
no need to upgrade my setup, especially on the productivity side of things. I feel like my Ryzen chip does a great job and I'm not really dying to have the added performance of the 9900K. Don't get me wrong, it'd be great to have, but I'm not really feeling the need for it. And of course, the other thing that I've already alluded to a couple times is the price of this thing, $500 plus the tax of it. Right now, you can find them for a little bit more expensive now that the early pre-orders are sort of gone, so the 9900K is a little bit more expensive than it was when I first pre-ordered it. But my monitor is a 60 hertz monitor, and sure, I'm gaming at an ultra wide display of uh, 3440 by 1440p, so really big display, but my processor is not really the limiting factor here, and in the vast majority of all my games, I have no problem at all hitting that 60 hertz mark, and the 9900K isn't gonna improve that for me and even in the fast sort of twitch suitors where i just run with an unlocked frame rate i'm not that competitive with my gaming I, my 60 to 100 to 150 uh, fps that i get in some of those different titles is more than enough for me sure i'll get a significant gain in some cases from moving from an 1800x to a 9900k but I'm not that concerned about it. And that's where the big problem with the 9900K lies is that if you're looking for gaming performance, you're actually probably better off served. If you have any kind of budget at all and money is any kind of issue, you're actually probably better served getting a 700K with a really nice cooler and reinvesting some of your savings into something like a better GPU. Whereas if you're on the productivity side of things, you may be better off and better served by, again, getting something like a Ryzen 8 core 16 thread part and just getting more RAM or more storage, or again, depending on your workflow, possibly even a better GPU. So it's not that the 9900K isn't a great chip because it just is. It's the fastest gaming chip on the planet Earth, at least that's available to consumers right now. The problem is the price to performance just is not there for this chip, both on the productivity side, it looks like from the reviews, as well as definitely on the gaming side. But of course, I always wanna kick it back to you. Are you planning on picking up this chip or a different chip for an upcoming gaming build? Let us know down below. And of course, if you like this content, you wanna see more like it, give it a like, share, subscribe, comment, all those things help out a lot. You can follow me on Instagram and on Twitter at Who's Your Hardware. And as always, I'll let YouTube queue up a couple more videos from my channel for you to watch. I'm Shane with Who's Your Hardware, and I'll see you guys in the next video.